Hello and welcome to this week's show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about immune system and essentials, things you must have to have a healthy immune system during this time of um, fear and anxiety. So the name of the show is called Immune Systems Must Have or better yet, the sky is falling and that we need to make sure that you're ready for it. So we're going to talk a little bit about anxiety today and and uh, things that help you get out of the funk, because if you're like us, it's like, oh, my gosh, we're just being inundated with um, so much. It just feels dark. Uh, you know, it's like every day you get up and you're, you're hit with, OK, everybody's sick and you're going to catch it next. So we're going to help give a little light on the subject today. And Dr. Lewis is going to tell you some of the things you need in your arsenal to make sure that you're um, as as good as you can be on your game with your immune system And some of the things that you need to do just every day that's not necessarily something to take, but just some ways to keep your immune system ahead of the game. So, Dr. Lewis, can you uh, help pull us out of this hole and (laughs) and give us some hope? Hey, if y'all can come by, I'll buy your lunch and guarantee you we'll be happy when we leave. Uh, one of the things I read about a million years ago is it, it said something about the illusion is the dust that the devil throws in the eyes of the foolish. And, you know, when there's mass fear and panic over this coronavirus, which, Lord, it just look at the, the statistics and, you know, somebody's, you know, trying to throw the wool over our eyes. If you think you have it, you have chills and fever and all that, go see your primary care physician, but don't be full of fear. It's probably something different. You know, see your PCP or go to your hospital. Uh, you're not going to succumb to it, at least in most cases. Um truth is just whatever you bring to yourself to believe and and it's generally more simple is better so i choose to be happy uh the lady called a while ago she said how you doing i said almost perfect she said oh my god i can't believe it i've never heard that before i said yeah it's a choice you know let's talk about immune system and the, the I think the first thing you can do to have a good immune system is quit being full of fear. Go be happy. Um, there's, You know, it's so sunny out here where we are in Texas. It's supposed to be raining, but it's not. It's sunny. And we saw the most beautiful tulips yesterday. We we're driving by, and I'm thinking, this is spring. This is the time of year that things start blooming, and you start having all that good energy, and you start getting excited about being outside. So maybe being outside is actually helpful. Do you think so, Dr. Lewis? Well, you know, the fresh air, absolutely. The extra vitamin D you'll get from sun exposure, even though we don't get a lot of that. But, yes, it does help uh, to be grounded, to get some more of the negative ions. And negative ions are actually the good ones. So that's kind of mis- misconstrued sometimes. Uh, you know, I've always noticed that the patients that are happier are the ones that get better results. And I think it's more attitude than anything. I can pretty much tell if a person's going to get happy just by how they act. If they say, well, what about this? And am I going to get this? Am I going to get this? It's like, well, yeah, because you fear it. Quit putting that into the forefront of your thoughts. Now, the other ones that get well are the ones that say, can I add this and can I add this? And they're the ones that they're the first ones to call me or email me or drop by and say, well, you know, this is better and this is better and this is better. It's all because you focus on that, that it actually increases. So it's the positive emotions uh, kind of Janet. And I like to say it's upstream or downstream and downstream is where you just kind of show up and enjoy the scenery and I even had a dream to that effect one time, and it, I quit struggling, quit paddling upstream, and I just went downstream, and the, the, the stream dumped me into an eddy, and there was just all kinds of things that would make you healthy and happy at the end of it, and I didn't even have to work for it. You can just show up, understand that God's in control, and although we do have influences, we don't have control, so just show up and be happy. Good. Lord, I, I'm so tired of this fear and the people that are succumbing to it. And it's like, you're stronger than this. 
Well, you know, and now the daylight savings time has just kicked in. So you're getting in for us, you know, most people, you're getting an extra hour of daylight at the end of the day. So you can start <laughs> gardening again. You can take walks. You can uh, just get out and enjoy the air. Yeah, go make your dog happy. Take it for a walk. And it's supposed to be that if you're, you know, the warmer temperatures, it's supposed to help this virus go away, correct? So maybe that's what we all need is actually do something outdoors. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the things, you know, you can get this from all kinds of positive thinking books and from the Bible. Be grateful. You know, people that are thankful for the little things are just inundated with the big things, the big blessings. And I found that to be very, very true. You know, I've, for the most part, escaped negativity. Sometimes I get into it. Janet helps me back out. But just be grateful. Look at some little thing that you're happy for. You know, there's an ambulance going by if you hear it in the background. Well, I'm grateful I'm not on it and grateful that they will get there in time to save the person that needs it. So Grateful we have the service. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Uh, so... I thank God for a lot of things all day long. And uh, when I don't feel like I have enough money, I go give it to somebody that needs it worse than me. I bought somebody's lunch the other day, although I couldn't do it anonymously. Actually, I did do it anonymously, but I'm sure they knew who did it. But it felt good. Uh, So go do something like that. If I don't feel appreciated, I start writing thank you notes or I tell, you know, my patients, oh, I really appreciate you. Kelly from Alabama called me yesterday and Janet says, well, that's beyond me. You got to talk to Dr. Lewis. I think it's just because Janet knows that Kelly brings me up. And I told her I literally pray for people as sweet and wonderful as she is. So if you want to be happy and healthy, just be like Kelly. Uh, Forgive. I mean, you know, people make mistakes and sometimes you're offense to what they did was not even what they meant that was just your reaction to it so give it up you know and if they really did offend you you know the best thing you can do is live healthy and happy man that's the best revenge if you want revenge use positive words somebody asked me how i'm doing i said somewhere between wonderful and perfect and that kind of floors some people you know Life and death and the power of the tongue, that's somewhere out of, I guess that's Proverbs or something like that. Uh, there's a book that I like. It's called um, The Biology of Belief. That's a really good book to tell people, oh, I really am creating my own reality. So immune system is going to be enhanced if you just choose. It's a choice. You have power if you choose to be happy. So one of the things you hear me talk about over and over again is toxic diets and environmental toxins. Those are real. You know, you can't escape them, but you can increase your body's ability to digest and eliminate and and get a much, much greater protection from the different outside threats. Uh, The and I've mentioned this one before. There was a guy as a doctor called uh, Metchnikoff won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1908 for his work on probiotics. Probiotics are just now in the last very, very few years beginning to get uh, popular. And you've got to realize just because it says it's probiotic doesn't mean it's really good or doesn't mean it's dead. Some people come in and say, it's not any good unless it's in the refrigerator. And I say, well, we've got a lot that are refrigerated And I have access to the scientists in quite a few different upscale companies. You can get great probiotics that don't have to be refrigerated. And that's our ProBioEase, which is one of the most uh, well-researched probiotics on the planet. So a lot of probiotics don't work. you got to get some that do and get somebody that you trust to supply them. Um, So these probiotics and and it takes a while to get them there and to get the numbers that large because it goes into about 100 trillion which is 10 times the number of cells in our own body uh they help us from be from becoming mutated or pathogens in our toxic environment and it helps keep you clean and there's a lot of good medical research that would agree with me some of that comes out of 
American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and one comes out of the Journal of Lancet. These are really good, well-respected, high-class medical texts. So you've got to think the cells of the intestines, uh, that's the closest relationship, uh, the barrier, so to speak. And one of the best things you can do to help the cells or or help the intestines to heal and, and act as a barrier is SBI. Yep, we have it. We sell the holy heck out of it. We've seen people that think it's miraculous. Uh, so I, I think Janet gives me a scoop or two every day. I don't know what she puts in my drink. It's certainly not alcohol. I wish she would, but, uh, that's my job in the afternoon. Do you put SBI in my drink? I do every single morning. Okay. No wonder. And when you feel like you have a poor diet, you have high stress, you have the toxic exposure, SBI is really, really good because it binds with some of the bad bacteria, yeast, fungus, viruses, and it helps support the good, beneficial bacteria. The other thing that I love, love, love that I've rarely talked about is something we call GI immune. It has AC11, which is cat's claw. I have talked about cat's claw. Most people take cat's claw and think they've got the cat's meow. It's like, no, 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 cat's claw. If it's not AC11, you're only getting a very small amount of the active ingredient. But with this really super-duper good cat's claw, you have a a rabinogalactin, which is from the larch tree. It's kind of, I guess you'd call it a water-soluble polysaccharide. It's a prebiotic, and it helps heal the GI tract. It helps uh, create an environment where your good bacteria can actually flourish and be happy and get rich and the good bacteria make us better because the seed of stress, anxiety, and depression can very easily be from your gut and and other things. Uh, Well, and that's the problem is you get more stressed out. You start eating bad things that are full of sugar. You do more alcohol because you're depressed over it. And doesn't that, in turn, create more inflammation in the body? So then you're just kind of dragging the body down where it might not have been that bad to start with, right? You know, that that's very, very true. Um, I used to be a stress eater, not so much anymore, but it was sweet stuff. You know, yeah, I'd rather have bluebell ice cream than alcohol, but... I don't do that much, and once you get the good bacteria back in your GI tract, that changes your taste buds because people say, but I just crave this. No, it's the bad gut bacteria that's craving it. So I don't do it that much anymore. Uh, There was a lady named Penny that wanted to know about the kombucha experiment. Well, I just bottled kombucha. You remember the podcast where we had Big John here, and he brought me a kombucha scoby. Well, I finally, finally, finally got it done. He asked yesterday, I think it was, how did it taste? I said, a little bit sweet, a little bit tangy. Uh, It's certainly carbonated. He says, well, it sounded like you got a good batch. And I just blended up some organic berry mix and put in there. And it really does taste good, which we'll get into the apple cider vinegar question later. Let Let me blow away some conventional thinking. I think this is very important because there are so many people that say they read this crap on the Internet. I'm sorry. Did I say that? And they say, well, cancer can't live in an alkaline environment. And I roll my eyes. You know, that's a Lewis trait, which means, oh, my God, what a dumb thing to believe. And many, many, many people believe it. Well, that's very much oversimplified. Um there is, you know, for example, lactobacillus acidophilus. The key word is acid. That's one of the good bacteria that almost everybody knows about. Well, because in an acid environment, many of the pathogenic bacteria will not grow. There is, I know, you can read research that says anything you want to read, but to me, this one makes sense. Um <clears throat> I read one. I made some notes here. It says Staphylococcus grows at 7.4 pH. Folks, that's alkaline. Streptococcus, 7.4 to 7.6. Pneumococcus, you know, for pneumonia. 
uh, diphtheria, clostridium tetani, H influenza, the influenza virus. Hey, think about that. 7.8. That's all alkaline. So God in his infinite wisdom made your saliva alkaline, but your stomach should be much, much more acid than it is. Uh, then you know it should be alkaline in the small intestine, and, and the colon should be more acidic. So you got buffered zones, and if the body misses one, it'll get it in the next. Healthy flora needs and loves acid. Pathogens love and need alkalinity. So I personally don't think the Cancer can't live in an alkaline body. I don't think that holds merit. I think that's very, very, very oversimplified. Be careful the crap you read on Internet. Well, and I want to give people a little bit of an arsenal that they could put in their cabinet so that, you know, it, it, we're not saying don't, you know, don't be in fear and don't do anything about it. We're saying don't be in fear, but keep things on hand and do things for yourself with your immune system to keep it up and keep going forward. Um, You know, one of the big ones I would like you to discuss is one that we have named immune essentials because of the different um, mushrooms that are in it. And can you tell us what, what makes that product so special and why they should keep that on hand um, I take it every day. You can take it, you know, just during the fear season. Yeah, because of the cordyceps and the uh, the turkey tail and the kind of things that are, some of them are very viral. Um, yeah, cordyceps is something the Chinese have used for a jillion years, you know, probably 5,000 years. Uh, I thought it was a mushroom, but then they call it a fung- fungus, and it's like, well, aren't they kind of the same thing? So I don't know the answer to that. But cordyceps is famous for strengthening your immune system in the respiratory part. And especially with the allergy season coming on, too, with all the pollen coming out. I I think that one is a great one to have. Another one that uh, we keep and we kind of only give it to people when they tell us they have flu-like symptoms, which I guess this would fall in the flu-like symptom category, is a product called Vira Pro. Um, when that one, we've got two of them going, one's Vira Pro, one's Vira Protect because we're actually running really low on both of them because yeah. of, because of all of this. Yeah, I know some of these may run out. So if you want it, you better get it. Yeah. But they've got, uh, the Vira Pro has got a stragglus and the European elderberry in it. Um, the echinacea, the lysine. Uh, a large amount of vitamin A, vitamin C. We're we're giving that to people, two of them, every three to four hours the first day because it really does, when you start feeling like you don't feel well, it just kind of nips it in the bud and you move on. Um, So that one's a great one to have in your arsenal. Along with taking like the vitamin D, and I think Dr. Lewis can tell you the importance of having K with vitamin D. You know, most people take just straight vitamin D and think that's enough, but actually K is a big player, right? It's good for a lot of things that most people don't talk about. You know, I I tell people the story about, well, vitamin D kind of mobilizes your calcium. So it's like the uh, bellhop or whatever they are. They get you and your luggage out of the car and take you to the hotel lobby. Vitamin K is the one that takes you and your luggage up to the room. So K is more responsible for transporting this calcium um, or, or taking you to the room or transporting your calcium out of your coronary arteries and back into your bones and not in your joints. And, you know, I'd, I've never been a huge, huge fan of taking calcium Uh, but sometimes it's really important, like when people get fevers, and yeah, if you get this, you need to go see your primary care physician and go to the hospital, but it's usually low ionic calcium. But now my opinion, and yeah, I got straight calcium, and it's good, but it's better to take it with magnesium, I think. Very good. And we do have quite a few questions to get to today, uh, which is always one of our favorite part of the shows because you guys come up with some things we would never think of and uh, like to stump Dr. Lewis with this. And I don't know how much of of this he has read, probably not enough. So we'll find out what he says to some of this. It should be interesting. Um, we had a question from Cricket that noticed she has a skin tag growing 
out of her eyelashes on her right eye. How do you deal with a skin tag? Well, go to go to you know dermatologist to have it taken off. Um, when I got, I broke out around my armpits and below that during a, a period of bad stress. And of course, I did overeat uh, the wrong things and fed the yeast. And uh, I started putting the a, a colloidal silver on there. Y'all know I'm not a big fan of silver, but we got a new one that does not kill the probiotics. And I started using that. Oh, my God, this yeast stuff from my stress and, and eating incorrectly went away very, very, very quickly. So I think this new colloidal silver is absolutely incredible. And there are some really exciting things going on with that. But uh, that has antiviral properties as well correct yeah there, there's a lot of research again we can't mm-hmm. we can't really say much about it but uh, uh that's the asap health max i think is what it's called mm-hmm. it's out there on the shelf yeah and online for you oh, that oh, can't oh, get to the shelf but. oh i was going to tell you cricket that when i was rubbing this uh silver i went down a rabbit hole when i was rubbing this silver around and and up on my neck and on my age spots because i'm 65 going on 30 my skin tags went away. That was the whole point. I almost missed it. So I'm bad about that, folks. Please <laughs> forgive me. That gel he's talking about is called wound gel. And for yeah. women out there, we've got um, a lotion that's a, it's lavender-based. It's not strong, and it goes away really fast. I've been putting it on because it acts a lot like Purell. It smells sexy. Yeah, but it's good for you. It doesn't have all the toxic <laughs> ingredients. Yeah. So um, that's pretty cool. So thank you, Cricket, for that. Joe says, hey, Doc. Uh, from your reading and experience, is there any problem in taking the 450-gram aloe every day for digestive health? I know on the bottle it states to use for occasional constipation. I think the question of that is best answered with a question. It's like, yeah, I know it says occasional use, but if you stay constipated, how toxic is that going to be and how many health problems could be created from being chronically constipated? I've made my colon much, much, much better over the years. It's been an issue since before I went to grade school. But I still take a laxative, although I don't take them as much. They're not as strong. I don't think it's wrong. I don't think it's bad. You know, a GI doctor may have a different opinion. But, uh, you know, just get your best opinion and go with it. I just think constipation that's chronic is much more dangerous than taking a laxative. I agree. Good answer. Uh, Anna. <laughs> Anna says, your podcast is amazing. Thank you for all the content. I just finished Do Supplements Really Work? And Dr. Stephen mentions needing collagen information for the supplements to actually work and stick. Thank you, Anna. Uh, I also need to know, is it super important for gut health, which I need? She's taking a different kind of collagen uh, a different kind of bone broth powder, which has small amounts of cane sugar and stevia in it. So she's asking, what kind of collagen do you recommend? And she says bone broth is the only protein powder her stomach can handle. Oh, how interesting. Thank you. Hope to book a consultation soon. Yay, yay, yay. Can we tell them about our new protein powder? Yeah, Anna, you keep talking like that, honey. I'll work a lot harder for you. But uh, thank you, thank you for for being a blessing and uplifting Mm -hmm. people and and making us be happy instead of being full of fear. We have a a protein powder that I think your stomach can handle because I had the same problem because it's poor digestion is what a lot of it is. Um, But this is pea protein, and there are no sugars in it. Uh, zero net carbs. Yeah, the so zero. It's, it's keto. Good. It's keto friendly. It's um, FODMAP compliant. It actually has fiber in it. It actually helps you go to the bathroom. So, Joe, you might want to consider adding that into your plan as well. With seven or eight grams of fiber. It so does. People are telling us that it helps them go to the bathroom better. I'm one of the ones that that has happened to, which you never have. I do take a digestive enzyme with it when I do it, just because my digestion is so bad. It, uh, like it's like a digestive essentials. I'll take one just because it's still a protein. I'm going to make a guess that Jan- and it's been slipping that in my drink in the morning because I'm pooping better. So, uh, are you are you doing it? Yes, I am. Uh, and then the collagen. We uh, her question is about the collagen. Do you um, 
what do you recommend for that? The one we sell. <laughs> we oh, have yeah. it in capsule. Well, we have asking. it in. Uh, uh, well, well, one of the questions we've had is, well, doctor so and so on internet says it's collagen this and collagen that and collagen eight and collagen ten and and it's like. All you need is one and two because that's about 95% of what you need, and they actually stimulate you to make the other collagen. You've got to realize, folks, that everybody's trying to sell something, including us, but uh, don't get hooked by the hype. We, we've, we've got the good stuff, you know, the registered trademark, the good type, stuff. Type one and type two, which is, big, which is a big thing to it, and it's clean. Okay, and then we had a question from Angele, which I just love this because I'm thinking her mother must have named her after the perfume back a long time ago. And for you guys that are too young for this, there used to be a commercial on that would just said something like, I can bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan. And I'm, and I'm wondering, did your mama name you after that? Because that, I just love that. Beautiful name. Uh-huh. She is wondering if you can offer suggestions on supplements uh, for on good supplements for low libido she's in shape she eats healthy she works out she doesn't drink or smoke she's not depressed she has an amazing husband who she loves and is very attracted to and great kids um she doesn't have to work so she has a pretty stress-free life and real really having nothing to complain about but as of seven years ago she struggled with libido issues out of the blue uh, she's going to be 39 years old this year, and prior to seven years ago, had a healthy appetite. It's, it's due to her having kids, and uh, it's not postpartum. Um, I believe I have HSDD, which some doctors don't believe it's a thing. I was uh, prescribed some drugs. She absolutely hates taking meds, but opens. she's open to trying it if it'll help. It helped her the tiniest bit. Uh, but the downside was she had a migraine every single day and felt like a zombie on it. She's taken a few things she's bought online. She's uh, she's a big fan of tinctures and feel that taking them consistently really pays off. She saw her nature path, and she she said her nature path is just kind of laughing everything off. Is there a possibility a certain test I should run, or you have any advice regarding other options? I already checked my thyroid. Nothing weird popped up, and she signed it sexless in Seattle. So we want to make sure we help her with that. Uh, a lab, uh, the lab, all the hormones: progesterone, testosterone, estrogen, DHEA, which is actually the, the precursor to making your hormones. And when you say you've had your thyroid checked, have you had all parts of your thyroid checked? Which is more than just the TSH, the free T3. Um, progesterone levels seem to be a huge one for low sex drive. We've got a product here, uh, called Progestavail that is a liquid that on the bottle, it says to put it on topically, call me and we'll discuss it. If you purchase that product, I do it a little bit differently. It works very well. Uh, another thing you can consider is primrose oil. Maca, you've probably heard of. We don't do as many of the tinctures. The the uh, the progestive veil is a liquid, but the other things are capsules. Uh, Doctor Lewis, have you got input on sex drives for for females? This should be good. You know, it's really a lot harder for females to get their sex drive back, but you know, it could be something like a missing neurotransmitter. You know, one of the happy hormones. It could be lack of uh, probiotics in your GI tract. And I gave a um, I gave a talk to a big medical group one time uh, on stress, anxiety, and depression. It's not all in your head, which all the MDs and PhDs and all that they said, "Well, that's great. You used our research." Well, we're all trying to get people well, um, so it could be from thyroid. It can be from adrenals. Somebody might have told you your thyroid's right, but it's not optimal. It could be so many different things. It is much harder on a woman to do that. It could be yeast. Uh, yeah, a lot of times, you know, the dysbiosis in, in the GI tract, I think it's easier for a man because we're more geared that way. But it's many, many times it's the xenoestrogens or estrogen mimickers, the plastics, pesticides, heavy metals that act like estrogen, which lowers, you know, it's a bad ratio of estrogen to progesterone. Uh, that being said, uh, maybe your husband could... Uh, 
romance you better. I don't know. Most men don't romance their wife. Women are so weird. I mean, different than men. <laughs> weird. Okay. Uh, I figured this was going to get good. <laughs> uh, well, they're different. You know, that book. Uh, We're emotional. Men, men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Yes. Venus, men from Mars. Yeah. That actually is a really good book. There's also an incredible book by Gary Smalley called If Only He Knew That Every Man Should Read to help him understand more about what's going on in a woman's head. And it may be postpartum anyway because you have given so much of your usually not enough nutrients you've given that to make babies. The GPC, which rebuilds the brain, and it could be more fish oil. You know, there there's so many possibilities, and that's why it's lab. We say, why well, guess? We test, and it's like, well, we still do a lot of guesswork anyway, but it takes out so much of the guesswork. It's crazy not to have lab, my opinion. Yeah. So um, get your lab done, Angela. We can help you with that. The other part of that lab, when you were talking about immune system, um, get your CBC checked on the lab because uh, we can see that white blood cell count if it's on the lower end. There's things we need to do to get that uh, to an optimal level so that you're able to uh, ward off some of these things that come along if you're one of those people that gets sick all the time. Uh, go to our website, greenwisdomhealth.com, fill out the health survey. We can help you get started. We can help you figure out what the next step is and start having a life worth living and get out and enjoy the sunshine. We hope you've enjoyed this week's show. We'll be here next time on the Green Wisdom Health Show. Please keep the questions coming. We love answering all of them. You guys have a very blessed week. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You are only one step away from a life worth living. 